this time around uh, we have a seamless world all right a world without any loading time uh, a world where you can uh, explore it's set in a city um, a modern city so it's set in present day it's set in uh, during one night um, and you you basically explore this modern city uh, and you explore Dracula's castle which is part of the city so the city is grown around the castle uh, we have a free camera which gives you the ability to look around and, and see if you missed anything um, and we have a world that gets progressively opened. As you as you progress through the story you will get to explore new areas and as the city becomes bigger you'll need to teleport to and from the castle and the city and um, you know you, you find an item that allows you to do that. And at the end uh, the whole world becomes connected. This is a modern city that we haven't seen before in a video game so uh, you know we're not going to drop Dracula in the middle of Times Square and you know sort of have him fumble around in New York or anything like that. This is a city very much that fits the Castlevania universe, uh, you know gothic design. It's very much like um, you know a regular European city like Madrid or um, even Cologne you know where you have kind of old and new together. I think people is going to be both pleased and surprised about our take on a uh, how a modern Castlevania city would look like. And that was key in the design choices that we made for the city that it felt like a Castlevania game. And we wanted there to be a lot of variety in the environments that, so it felt like it was different in everywhere that you went. Every time you turned a corner there was something new to see, something exciting to see, different lighting, different elements, uh, you know, huge vistas, um, you know, really cool architecture, statues, that kind of stuff. We are, we are in Spain um, in an area called Castile, which is basically castle area. And uh, there are a lot of castles here that we are able to take inspiration from. And then of course, you know, Hungary and Eastern Europe and that kind of architecture has very much played into this as well. Um, you know, Transylvania, Wallachia, those kind of areas that are referenced in the game. Um, many of the um, design choices that we took are taken directly from real buildings and real architecture. We love uh, New York buildings, neoclassic buildings, and we thought that they were very, very suited for a... Uh, Castlevania city. I think one of the cool things about Castlevania in general and certainly about Lords of Shadow was having the enemies and the variety of enemies that you had and so I think there's lots of very unique boss battles in the game. So you're going to see lots of new enemies and new characters you haven't seen before especially you know being set in a modern era having modern weaponry or modern enemies to, to go up against is, uh, is an interesting proposition especially when you have these kind of old uh, swords and you know chaos claws and whips and stuff and, you know fighting modern weaponry is something I think that's going to be really exciting. Satan coming back to earth you know is, is a real danger and it's something that's a threat that's there throughout the whole game and uh, you know I have to say that Satan this time around he knows that he's facing a very powerful foe so he's ready. When he comes back, he's ready. And uh, you know, it's a very different Satan to the one that we saw at the end of Little Shadow One. Not just in design terms, but in terms of character, in terms of how he's evolved as a character and his motivations and the things that he wants to achieve in coming back to take over the world. So, um, it's what's really cool is the confrontation between Dracula and Satan is very, very powerful. And um, I think it's going to really satisfy players to see the the changes that we've made to Satan as a character. The Fury. Your hate and your vengeance. I am your destiny. Konami.